Hey, it's Barr from Wonderful Works. Did you know that sometimes as a ministry leader, the best way to help our students is to help them help themselves? Today, we're going to be talking about disability self-advocacy. So glad you're here. Hey, don't you want to join in with the group? Oh, you don't feel comfortable because you have a disability that your classmates don't always understand? Hmm. Well, what if you help them understand it better? Disability Self-Advocacy, empowering students to share about their disability at church. God made everyone just as they are. In fact, we're all part of his wonderful works. Hey, I think I've heard that somewhere before. And he wants each of us to be included at church. But sometimes when a person has a disability that others don't understand, feeling included can be hard, especially for kids. But it doesn't have to be. Inviting a student to talk to his class about his disability can make a huge difference. Today, we're going to look at three steps for empowering students to self-advocate. Number one, plan ahead. The most important step in supporting a student's self-advocacy is for leaders and the student and his family to meet beforehand and collaborate on a plan. This will help you all stay on the same page and know how to support each other. Here's some things you may want to talk about. The logistics. Agreeing on when, where, and how long the talk is before it happens will cut down on confusion. The speakers. Will the student be the only speaker? Will his family speak with him or on his behalf? Will an expert in the field be invited to share too? And what about this? Will any of his classmates be invited to sit with him up front as a show of support? There's only one right answer. Ask the student what he wants to do and then empower him to follow his vision. Next, you're going to want to talk about the talking points. But before you do, make sure you all understand what information can be shared and what information should be kept private. Part of supporting your student is supporting his right to set boundaries. Now once that's done, here's some things you may want to consider sharing with the class. Start with a disability diagnosis. What is it and how does it impact daily life? This would be a great place to expand on some of the things that his peers may see him doing that they don't understand. Explaining why someone does things helps reduce fear and faulty assumptions and makes being accepted a lot easier. You may even want to tell the class ways in which they can help support his needs and how much this means to him. After you look at talking points, what about a Q&A? Find out if the student wants to take questions after his talk and see if you'd like to include anyone else with this. And two more things to discuss ahead of time. Ask if there'll be any audiovisual needs for the presentation so you can be prepared and remind everyone that all the information that will be shared should be age appropriate level for the audience. Great, so now that you have all your plans set, is there anything else you need to do before the big day? Number two, set them up for success. When presentation day comes, you might feel like the leader's job's already done, but not quite. There are a few things that leaders should do to set their student up for success. First, start with prayer. Empowering students to advocate for themselves is no small thing. They're being brave and vulnerable. This is a big deal in the life of your student and his family and for the future of your church. So cover them all in prayer before you start. Invite Jesus in to grow the hearts and minds of all who are present. Then explain to the class what the expectations are for the talk, such as, we will listen quietly while our speaker talks. Then if you have questions, you may raise your hand at the end. And you can ask anything you want. But if something is private, our speaker may not want to share and that's okay. Then give a warm introduction, pass the mic, and watch your student shine. Wow, that's good stuff. So once your student's done talking, you're done too, right? Number three, invite others in. One of the most important parts of supporting a student's advocacy talk comes afterwards. Help students process what they learn through discussion. You can ask, what was one thing you learned today? Or, have you ever had an experience where you felt different than those around you? What would have made you feel better? And what ways can our class help make everyone feel included? Oh, and here's another cool idea. Consider taking some of the suggestions and make it into a poster for the room. After all, empowering students doesn't stop with just one. Empowerment is for everyone. Well, I think we learned a lot about helping students advocate for themselves. But is there one more thing before we go? 
Remember that helping students advocate is not a one-time event. No matter how great the talk goes, the real work comes afterwards. As a leader, keep modeling what inclusion, support, and friendship really looks like. Keep encouraging courageous self-advocacy and tender compassion from peers. And be intentional about creating a supportive classroom for all your students. Because feeling included should be for everyone. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.